So far we have looked at dynamics problems where things were accelerating in a linear manner, so that is uh, net force pro problems. We have looked at objects that had a net torque, that's called rotational dynamics. Now we're going to combine the two. So when you do some, when you do a problem that has something that's going to spin and something that's going to move in a line, you have to do both uh, Newton's second law for linear dynamics, so net force equals mass times linear acceleration. So you're going to apply that to the the linear thing, whatever. I don't know, I don't even know what to call it. The thing that's going to move in a line. You also need to do Newton's second law for rotation. So that is net torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. That is going to be for the rotating thing. Rotating thing. Yeah, I spelled that right, okay. And then you're also going to need this equation. Linear acceleration equals radius times angular acceleration where that R is measured from the pivot or from the axis of rotation of the rotating thing to the point at which the linear thing like comes in contact with the rotating thing. Uh, that sounds stupid, but I'll show you a picture in a second. Um, from axis to point of contact. with linear thing. Okay, I'm getting very sloppy. Okay, the other thing is for for this equation you have got to make sure that your signs match. I'll show you that in uh, make sure your signs match. I can't write and speak like two different things. It doesn't work. Make sure your signs match. I'll show that in an example problem in a second. Okay. Let's go look at that example problem. All right, so I've got this pulley. It's a giant hulking pulley. Has a mass of 6.5 kilograms. That's ginormous. In the past, we have pretended that our pulleys were massless and then ignored them. But if it's not massless, then you have to make all that mass rotate in order for this to fall, because this is attached to a rope that's wound around the pulley. So as the rope like winds out, this has to rotate, okay? Um, so let's start with, let's start with the linear thing, this thing. I need a free body diagram. So I've got mass pulling up, I'm going to have tension in this rope, and pulling down, I'm only going to have the weight of this object. Okay, um, let's say that up is positive and down is negative. I am totally just making that choice. That choice will have consequences later, as I'll show you. But uh, let's just go with that for now. So I write down Newton's second law. Okay, the M is this M, so I'm good. Net force, I've got tension up, weight down, so I just write T minus MG equals MA, and I'm kind of stuck, I'm done with that. Okay, next I'm going to use Newton's second law for rotation. Net torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Here's where we gotta make sure that our stuff matches. Look at the wheel. When this unwinds and this and the and the mass pull, moves down, so basically when this moves in a negative direction, I need that direction to match, like to be the negative direction on the wheel too. So if down is negative for this, and when this moves down, this is gonna wind is gonna unwind this way. So I need that to be the negative direction of rotation as well, which is luckily clockwise, which is the conventional um, sign. Like most most of the time, we go with clockwise as negative, anyways. So I'm sticking with conventions this time. Okay, so just keep that in mind. The torque has to be caused by a force. The only force that's acting on this wheel is right here the tension in this rope. Same tension as this tension. So the only torque, let's look at the equation for torque. In general, the torque from any force is that force times 
the radius from the axis to the point of contact for the force times the sine of the angle between them. Here's the distance. That's my r, which happens to be the radius of the pulley. And note that that is a right angle, so the sine is going to be 1. I can kind of just ignore it. So the tension that I'm going to put over here, or sorry, not the tension, the torque that I'm going to put over here, the only torque is this force times that radius, so tension times radius. That's the only torque, so it's the only thing that goes on the left-hand side. Now I, yesterday we were talking about moments of inertia of solid objects, and somewhere we looked up the I for disk, which a pulley, we're going to pretend is a solid disk, is one-half mr squared, the mass of the whole disk, times the radius of the disk squared. So that's what's going to go right here for i, and then I got my alpha hanging out. Okay. Now, remember the sines thing? So I forgot to put the negative on here. Um, it needs to go right here. Burp. That torque should have been negative. I don't want to go back and edit this, so we're just go we're pushing forward. We're pushing forward. Okay. Okay, so that is uh, Newton's second law for rotation all filled out. I can do a little bit of simplification, like I've got an R on both sides right there, um, which means that negative tension should equal one-half mass of the pulley, radius of the pulley, times angular acceleration. Okay, I'm going to wait to do anything more with that. Let's look at the last the last equation, that one. Okay. Okay. How about green? I haven't used green yet. Um, oops. Boop. Linear acceleration equals radius. Well, the radius is the distance from here to the point of contact with the linear stuff. Okay. I'm going to write this on. Okay. So for this problem, here's the linear stuff. This, all of this is going to move in a line. So it comes in contact with the rotating stuff right here. So my r in this equation is from the pivot, or sorry, from the axis to that point of contact. That's my r, which just so happens to be the radius of the pulley. So I can replace little r with big R. OK. Now I've got three equations and three unknowns. Tension angular acceleration, and linear acceleration. This is a system of three equations where I'm only actually looking for alpha. I could ask you to find all three things, but I'm only asking for one thing, so let's just do that one thing. Okay, so that's just a bunch of substitution stuff. Um, let's see, let's put, let's put the, I'm going to make, I'm going to change the sign so if this is positive, this is negative, and then I'm going to put that in there, and then I'm going to put this in here for lowercase, or for linear a, and when I do that, I get negative one-half mr alpha for t minus mg equals m times capital R alpha. Now I need to get um, like terms together, so I'm going to move this over here. So I end up with negative mg equals mr alpha plus one half mr or capital mr alpha. Let's factor out an alpha. You know what? I'm going to do it this way because I'm running out of room. Going to factor out an alpha. Boop. There we go. And then divide both sides by this ginormous chunk. So negative mg over m cap little little m capital R plus one half big M capital R as a quantity. That should equal alpha. Alrighty. If I put numbers in then, let's see what I'll get. Okay, I put all those straight into a calculator all at once, and I got negative 12 
and change, but I only had two sig figs over here, so I'm gonna keep it at two sig figs. Negative 12 radians per second squared, which I'm just gonna check on my sign conventions. I said that negative was this way, which makes sense. That's the way that if I started from rest, it should end up moving, so the acceleration should also be negative. Um, another way to write that would be 12 radians per second squared clockwise. That's usually the best way is using a question word, or not a question word, bleh, a uh, direction word, radians per second squared clockwise. That's the best way. Okay. Um, if you go to part two, we'll do a harder example.